I'm with the National Health Council, and, and for those of you who are not aware, we're an umbrella organization of patient advocacy organizations like the American Heart Association, National MS Foundation. Um, we have many organizations in membership, but our governance is controlled by the CEOs of the patient organizations. And while I agree completely with everything that's been said so far, I want to add one piece that's new, and, and I like to think of it this way. It's what I call the innovation wallpaper. I want you all to think back to your homes and think about that wallpaper you hung in the late 80s. When you first hung it, it was right in style. It looked amazing. Six months later, you don't see it anymore. But when people come into your house and they see that wallpaper for the first time, they're thinking, oh my God, what is this person thinking? <laughs> I say this because we've developed a set of rules that govern how we develop new treatments. And for patients, the constituents we represent, the development of new treatments is personal. These are people living and dying as a result of their chronic disease. They're very interested in access to what exists, but they want the treatments to get better. And for many people, there are no effective treatments. They're highly concerned with the development of treatments, and yet we have a system that has wallpaper that's detracting from the development of many important treatments. Our current system that relies on patents discourages as much as 80 to 90% of the best science. Now think about that for a minute. When you look at the development of new treatments, shouldn't it be the scientific opportunity that governs? And yet the reality is if you don't have a strong patent, your product is not going to be developed. And we have countless examples where the patient organizations have actually tried to pay pharmaceutical companies to develop these promising treatments. It's an unsustainable proposition and it's an easy policy fix. We want personalized medicine. We're now 11 years beyond the Genome Project. Everybody expected that medicine could be personalized. And we're seeing some incredible examples where the diagnostic space is helping to target treatments for the right people. But it's not moving as fast as we would like, largely because we have policies like the old wallpaper that are discouraging that. We have opportunities to change some of these uh, policies. It's sort of like taking that wallpaper down and freshing up your house. So while I agree with everything that's been said, I think we have an opportunity to freshen the environment, strengthen the innovation in this country, and make sure that patients for whom this is really personal, get the treatments that they need.